breathe in deep and follow the sound all the way out. He was an ordinary man. If you were ever to pass him on the streets, you never remember him again. Dressed in gray shirt and khaki pants, he looked plain and ordinary. On a warm day in July, sunny, not unlike this one outside today in Seattle, this man walked into a major airport. Held tight to his chest was a black box. Into the crowd, he called out, Will you listen to me? Well, like most of us, too busy with our busy lives and fast-paced schedule, we went on. He was ignored, given the silent treatment. Two seconds later, boom! A loud detonation went off. Scraps flew. Black smoke choked. This most ordinary man perhaps had uttered something that most of us ordinary people would have liked to utter. Will you listen to me? It was a most desperate act and a most desperate plea. But how many of us have asked that same question in the workplace with our family members, in our relationships, or sometimes just in the middle of the night facing ourselves, asking, will you listen to me? I think that most of us in here are probably used to preparing to speak, but very few of us prepare ourselves to listen. Usually we think that somebody will listen to us if we just speak fast enough loud enough, feisty enough, or non-stop. You ever get that <laughs> from someone? You can't get a word in edgewise, right? So if that is the case, then it's difficult to get someone to listen. I like to suggest something radical. Something radically simple. And that is we must listen to be heard. What do I mean by that? There was a, a, an award-winning composer. He had done a number of different compositions where music notes just flew out of him. After a series of successes, then he was in a stuck place. He had writer's block. Nothing was coming out of him. So at that particular time, by chance, he learned about listening to his body, to the sensations of his body. By getting in touch with the sensations of our body and the messages and everything that emerges as a result of that, that he actually had an aha moment. He realized that his successes made him afraid because his relatives started to distance themselves from him out of jealousy. And because of that, he 
learned to continue to breathe into those sensations, work on his perception, and so again, music started to flow out of him. With his success the next time, another award-winning composition, he then sh shared the success with many more gifts to his relatives. So that's about listening and preparing to listen with our body. There's listening with our brain or having more of an understanding of the brain. We all know that we have the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere to our brain. The left hemisphere is usually the logical, the analytical, the speech-oriented lobe. It thinks in a much linear fashion. Some would describe it as a more masculine hemisphere. And the right hemisphere is where there's a lot more creativity, emotion, intuition, sometimes irrationality, and it's associated or said to be feminine. There, with this kind of understanding, and one particular scientist who had this understanding was driving in the UK with his wife one time. Now in the UK, the steering wheel is on the opposite side of our, our car, right? So it's actually on the right of us. And so he was actually listening to his partner through his left ear. He noticed that while he was in the UK and listening, the words coming to him was much more agreeable. And then when they get back to the United States, the steering wheel was on the other side. So the words were coming through his right ear, getting to his left brain. So the left hemisphere is associated with the right side of our body, right, and vice versa. So he found that when listening through his right ear, it was much more critical of a mind state. So if you're interested in capturing <laughs> a, a particular spot, you know, you know which side to be on, um, that's one thing. But it's more about understanding our, our mind and how this mind-body connection actually works. There's another aspect of it too, the sacred. This particular background that you see on the slides, it's the mystical hum photo. The mystical hum is a universal hum that actually was captured by the Hubble telescope, there's an actual and ever-present hum that exists throughout the universe. If we ever open ourselves to it, we can hear it. We'll try this exercise a little bit later. 